Melodyne is a, is a powerful tool for editing a single vocal performance, but in the art of vocal production, we're not just talking about one vocal anymore, but the creative process involving many vocal tracks. And that's really where Melodyne Studio can help transform your workflow. So let's take a look at how. Now, with most audio software, we're used to working in two dimensions, right? So you'll have tracks stacked vertically and they'll be playing out horizontally over time. But with Melodyne Studio, we can actually make use of depth, you know, where you've got vocal layers that can be stacked on top of one another in the same window and edited at the same time for a, a precise and efficient workflow. So let's say that we've got a, a nice lead vocal performance and also two doubles that we want to edit. What we can do is uh, go to Melodyne on the lead vocal track and we can activate the track list up at the top left here. And what we're going to do is hold command and shift and we can record enable all three tracks at the same time for a really quick transfer into the Melodyne plugin. So here's kind of what it sounds like at the moment. Now since we like the performance of the lead vocal, we want to make that safe from all of our edits at the moment. Uh, just by going up to the top left, and we're going to select the gray blob icon, and that, that makes it safe so that anything that we do to the other tracks, it won't affect the performance uh, of what we're liking with the lead here. And now what we're going to do is hold command, and in the same area, we're going to activate the orange blobs for both of the dubs, and that's going to superimpose the doubles on top of our lead track so we can use it as a reference to see uh, the way that the pitch curves align and make some changes to both of those at the same time. So for example, what we can do now is we can press Command A and highlight all of the blobs and we can tighten up the tuning by using the, the pitch macro, okay? And we so if we drag that up a little bit, we just tighten it up, you can see that it's edited both of the doubles at the exact same time, which is a nice little time saver. In this scenario though, Melodyne has a really useful feature called spread unison tracks, and you can access that on the bottom right here with these uh, three squiggly lines that are sort of stacked on top of one another. And that gives a, a visual indication of what's about to happen here. We get to, to stagger the doubles on top of the lead and see exactly where we need to make edits to uh, make more of a cohesive performance between the leads and the, and the doubles. And it also makes it easier to individually edit whichever dub you want to work on, right? Because there's some space in between them now. The last thing you said is on my mind. The so maybe here we want to get out our uh, pitch drift tool and just make them a little bit more uh, consistent with each other. And maybe another thing we can do to make the doubles a little bit more consistent is to take a note like this where you can see one of the doubles goes a little bit sharp in transition there. Maybe we want to just soften that up a little bit here and create a more similar performance so that they sound more cohesive. It is and speaking of note transitions, you can hear that there's a couple of notes here that transition at different speeds, and that's something that we can address easily with our time tool in Melodyne. But the first thing I'm gonna do uh, to make it a little bit easier is I'm gonna reactivate the lead vocal track by changing it from a gray to an orange blob at the top left in the track list here. And now we've got the lead vocal on the bottom and the doubles stacked on, on top of those. And what I'm looking to do here is, you can see that the transition here is a little bit quicker than it is in the doubles. And so we're gonna use that as, as our reference here. And so if I just activate the time tool, and let's say we're gonna work on this double first, I'm gonna just um, hold Alt and I'm gonna just drag it back and see if we can line it up a little bit better. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other double here and see how this sounds now. Last thing you said is on my mind. Now, if we want to get even more specific, we can actually use the time handle tool and really get into the nitty gritty and double click and add a couple of points where we can tighten up that uh, curve just a little bit more to more closely resemble the way that the lead performance was sung. The last thing you said is on my mind. So now let's make sure that the lead vocal track is safe from our edits again and uh, just 
deactivate them in the same way that we did before. And we're going to also deactivate the spread unison track view to return back to normal here. And beyond just the, the tuning and the timing of the notes, we also might want to address the S's and the breaths in the doubles in relation to the lead vocal, because a lot of times those sibilances can really stack up in the mix and, and start to sound harsh. So we can address all those at the exact same time. So since we've just got the doubles um, activated as orange blobs here, we can Press Command A, and I'm actually going to zoom out to get a little bit better of a view here of the whole performance. So we can press Command A and select all the notes, and then what we're gonna do is use the Sibilance Balance tool, which is found inside the Amplitude tool here, so it's the third one in the, in the sub menu. So we'll activate that, and we're just gonna, we're gonna bring down only the double S's. Uh, we'll start with something a little bit subtler. Last thing you said is on my mind the last thing you said is on my mind so that might be a nice start for us but often what you can do with with doubles is be even more extreme because once everything is in the mix together you won't even really notice so if we brought this down like you know 80%, 85%. You'll still hear the S from the lead vocal, but everything else will be brought down and controlled uh, with the doubles. Last thing you said is on my mind. The last thing you said is on my mind. Now this is a good example of a situation where you might want to solo just the doubles and hear them apart from the leads to make sure that you're not uh, reducing the S's too much. And there's an easy way that you can do that within Melodyne. You don't have to worry about soloing all any of these tracks within your DAW. You can just do it within this same window. So if you go up to the top right, you can see this uh, editing mix slider. And what we can do is we can slide it all the way to the left and that essentially tells Melodyne what you want to hear when you double click anywhere inside of the empty part of the grid, right? So since we've only got our doubles as the orange tracks, the activated tracks, I'm just going to double click here. Now obviously that sounds a little bit funky on its own, but that will tell us that we need to dial back our sibilance balance tool just a little bit and we'll bring back some of those sibilances here. And then whenever we press play in our DAW, it'll return back to the normal mix of all three. Now, as part of the creative process of vocal production, we might wanna quickly create some harmonies that we can stack on top of the lead vocal and doubles here. So let's go ahead and do that in our DAW. And, and to get started, all we're gonna do is just highlight our doubles and we're going to uh, duplicate them by pressing Command D. And I'm gonna just rename these uh, Harm 1 and Harm 2. So now in Melodyne, uh, in the track list on the top left, you can see that Harm 1 and Harm 2 have already been added for us that we can you know, edit to our heart's content here. Same as before now, we're just gonna go to the track list up on the top left and deactivate the dubs and just activate our harmonization uh, duplicate so that we can edit the notes of, of that and uh, change it into a harmony in relation to the lead vocal here. Now one really cool thing you can do in this process is, is uh, head up to the top left where this treble clef is and you can right click and go to key snap. And that's going to ignore all the notes that are outside of our key that we've set here. And this is going to be in C major. So all the black keys are gonna be ignored when we move this uh, harmony up and down. Okay, so if I select all the notes and I drag up, you can see that it's ignored E flat and D flat and everything else. And let's see how this sounds now. Last thing you said is on my mind. The last thing you said. Let's try the same thing now with the other harmonization. So what I'm gonna do is deactivate this and we're gonna activate the other harmonization and do the exact same thing. I'm gonna highlight all the notes and I'm just gonna drag it up another third here. Last thing you said is on my mind. So it's also really nice that we can see the other uh, deactivated notes so that we can figure out which chords we're trying to create with our harmonies. And it's similar to working with MIDI in a piano roll, but here we're only using the notes that are within the key that we've set, which is 
a really cool feature. We can also have Melodyne uh, suggest some harmonizations to us using the chords from the song here. So if you go up to the, the top right and you see these three stacked notes uh, and you click that, you can go to show chords and here are the chords in the song. And now if you go back to the treble clef and you right click and go to chord and we'll make sure it's on chord snap. Now we're using the chords that are actually in the song. So if I highlight these and you know, we do something a little bit crazy. Last thing you said is on my mind. The last thing you said. So it's kind of a cool way to uh, get creative with the chords that you're actually working with in the song. But let's say we like having more options. We can always go back to our key snap here. And when you're making these decisions about what kind of harmony you want, uh, with the lead vocal, a cool thing that you can do is when you're monitoring a blob, so when you click and hold a, a blob for, let's say on harmonization two here, it will play out, but when you hold command, it will play out the whole chord in that moment in time. So you can check to see if your intervals are the way that you want them to be by just continually doing that. So let's say that we wanted to stick with this harmony here. Last thing you said is on my mind. The last thing you said is on my mind. One important thing to point out too is that all, even though we're seeing everything in the same window, all the tracks are being sent independently to the mix bus, which means that you can process everything uh, independently, even though you're working within the same window. So like if I duplicated harm two and I call this, you know, octave or something like that. So even though we're raising this track up a whole octave, we can still uh, continue to be creative with effects and stuff. Like we could send it to reverb or whatever. And only that track will send to reverb. Last thing you said is Now, even though pitch shifting copies of, of the dubs isn't going to sound quite as organic as it would if you uh, were to re-record it, I like to do this because you can kind of uh, audition how the harmonizations are going to sound in the mix. You can save a little bit of recording time and also maybe some stress on the vocalist by avoiding recording a bunch of takes that you're probably not even going to use because the harmonies weren't even desirable in the full mix, right? Now, one of the most powerful features that we get access to in Melodyne Studio is the sound editor. And in particular, the control that we get over the harmonic content. So when we're listening to stacked recorded material, you'll notice that oftentimes there are these uh, buildups of frequencies that are unpleasant and undesirable in the mix. and so. You might be thinking, well, why don't I just notch those out with EQ? But the problem that you'll run into is that the frequency changes based on the note that's being played within the melody. And so if you notch it out, you might be notching out A, some important frequencies that you'll need in other parts of the melody, but B, you won't be able to control the thing that you wanted to control in the first place. And so a much more musical approach is to focus on the harmonic content because it will always be relative to the note that's being played. So let's take a look at an example here. So let's start by opening up the sound editor, which you can access at the top left here. And you'll see all of these uh, harmonics that it melody has analyzed for us. So let's take a quick listen to the vocals that we've been working with here. Last thing you said is on my mind. Now in this example, I can hear that the, the there's a quality about the vocals that's making them a little bit boomy. And so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go ahead and press command shift and make all the tracks uh, active. So all of them are orange now because we want to be able to edit the harmonic of every single one of these at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to boost this first harmonic. So the, the lowest harmonic uh, that we have access to here and see if that's the problem that I'm hearing. Last thing you said is on my mind, the last thing and it is that that's kind of that boomy quality. It, it, there's a little bit too much low end, low end on some of those notes. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring down the first harmonic uh, about six dB and see how I like this. Last thing you said is on my mind. The and I'm just going to bring this back up a hair here. Last thing you said is. 
So you can hear that it's starting to sound a little bit more balanced and we don't have to make like these EQ cuts at you know 200 Hertz or whatever. Uh, we can actually just reduce it like this and we can continue to do that with whatever problems we're hearing. And the sound editor is capable of a lot more than just reducing unwanted harmonics and vocals. So let's do something a little bit different here. I'm gonna deactivate everything except for the doubles. And what we're gonna do is use the sound editor to change the formant content of our dubs so that they pop out of the stereo mix a little bit, which is another creative way that you can use the sound editor. So what I'm gonna do is select all the notes of the dubs and when you uh, drag your mouse below the bars here sort of to where the numbers are, you can control the formants in a really interesting way. You can see how the harmonic content changes. So let's take a listen. This can be a nice way to give um, a more rich stereo image to your vocal tracks. So let's let's listen to everything together. Last thing you say. It's almost like another singer is actually singing alongside uh, your lead vocalist, even though it's the same person. And there's lots of ways we can get creative with this because we don't have to select all of the harmonics at once. We can actually just select uh, a few of them. So for example, we might just select harmonics four through eight and change the formats of only those or any combination you want. So let's let's take a listen to what this would do to the doubles. Last thing you said is so it does some really interesting things to the character of the vocal. And so in context, let's say we, we kept the formants up. Here's what it sounds like. So just by narrowing the band of harmonics that we're working with and adjusting only those formants, we can avoid that sort of chip monkey sound that you might get by uh, adjusting the formants of the entire harmonic spectrum all at once, just as a more natural and sort of unconventional approach to enriching the stereo image. So having the ability to work on all of these tracks at the same time in the same window is awesome, not only because you know it's more efficient, but also because it gives you the flexibility that you would want as both a musician and engineer. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.